Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us for this session on Container SRX. Uh, this is a joint session between Juniper and Expedient. And we'll talk to you about Container SRX and some of the use cases for this product. My name is uh, Shishir Agrawal. I'm part of the product management team at Juniper, and I lead Juniper's data center and virtualization security portfolio. I uh, have over 14 years of experience working at different tech companies like Symantec, Intel, and now Juniper Networks. I'll let John introduce himself. Yeah, I'm John White. I'm the VP of Product Strategy for Expedient. I've been a technologist since birth, so I started out on a Commodore 64 and uh, kind of kept on going from there. I've been with Expedient for 12 years now, which is weird for two reasons. One, because millennials never stay in the same place for that long, and two, that uh, I've spent 12 years in a service provider, so my education and experience is pretty unique. I focus a ton on our architecture of cloud, managed services, our security services for our customers, so I'm pretty pumped to be here giving this presentation. I'm on LinkedIn and uh, Twitter pretty actively as well, so I'd love to keep the communication going there. Sure, so, <clears throat> so before I jump into uh, Container SRX, let me just uh, give you a brief overview of uh, Juniper Security. As you know, Juniper is one of the leaders in network security. We have the industry's leading physical and virtual firewalls, uh, career-grade physical and virtual firewalls. And at OpenStack, we are announcing this new product called as Container SRX, which is basically all of the key security capabilities that we offer in our career-grade physical and virtual firewalls. Now customers can deploy those capabilities in a container as well. And where it's very relevant is for environments where it's a total container-based environment where customers don't want to deploy VMs. Also, there is a lot of use cases where customers can benefit uh, of de by deploying security in a container, and we'll go through it. <clears throat> so with CSRX, we have the industry's first containerized firewall. It's really designed for doing secure services. So we offer all of the core perimeter security features, such as firewall, VPN, and NAT, all of the content security features like antivirus, IPS, web filtering, and anti-spam, and also application security features where users, uh, where customers can actually apply policies based on application identification and also user awareness. So all of those features are available in a Docker container format where customers can deploy those security capabilities now in a container and get all the benefits that containers provide, which I'll, I'll talk to you about. In addition, uh, we provide also a uniform management tools with Juno Space Security Director, which would be the single management solution for both physical, virtual, or a container SRX that, that you might want to deploy in your environment. In addition, you can always do automation uh, via Netcom for RESCO. So what are some of the value props of, of deploying security in a container? Uh, as you know, containers are very lightweight given they are sharing the host kernel OS and they don't have like a separate guest operating system, uh, which VMs have. So given that, container SRX would be very, very elastic, which is one of the key attributes you need in a cloud environment. You can imagine now having a very low footprint container firewall, which you can scale out massively as your demands increase. It's also very agile, because the boot up times that you get with containers is, in our case, it, we, it's about a second, as opposed to VMs, which could take minutes to boot up. So it allows you to really scale up and scale down your security depending on, on your demands. And last but not the least, cost savings, which is one of the big things uh, for a lot of customers trying to move to SDN and NFE. Going to a container environment, uh, given its low footprint, it will have much higher density. We believe up to 4 to 5x density than what can be offered by VMs, which means that you will have to deploy a lot less compute or a lot less servers to be able to host the tenants that you might have, especially in a managed service provider use case where you have 100,000 tenants or, or large, large number of tenants. In addition, uh, today, if you look at security solutions, they are built as a monolithic package. With Container SRX, we would be able to provide more of microservices where if you just need a NAT, we can actually provide you a container NAT, or if you need IPS, we would be able to provide you just the IPS. So now, customers can get that flexibility of getting these microservices or microsecurity services, which we, are, we can also price much better compared to today where customers buy a monolithic package and they might be paying for 10 features where they might only need one feature. 
So just to compare VSRX and CSRX, just to show you some key performance metrics. Uh, if you need a single monolithic uh, package which has all of the security and routing, that's provided by VSRX, which is our virtual machine or virtual solution today. But if you're looking for only security services, Container SRX is a better solution in that use case. Uh, there is no static CPU reservation that you have to do for Container SRX, whereas with VSRX, you'll have to deploy or you'll have to upfront specify that it needs two vCPUs. In terms of memory, uh, you need four gigs for VSRX as an example, but with containers, you only need 100 meg to begin with. And then depending on the workload, uh, it, it dynamically <coughs> scales based on memory. Boot up time, seven minutes to about a second. And image size from three gigs down to about 150 meg. So you can see the difference in the performance and scale attributes between a virtual and a container environment. So let's look at two use cases. The first one is virtual CPE, which is again one of the big use cases for SDN and FE adoption for service providers. So as you know, virtual CPE is all about saving costs for the service providers and being able to deploy those services much more efficiently to branch offices. So in this case, you have a layer two device sitting on a branch office. <coughs> you backhaul the traffic to a service provider, data center, or cloud. And for every tenant now, you can actually instantiate a CSRX, which is providing differentiated security services to the end customer. The benefit of container SRX is here is a lot of these managed service providers, think of any big service providers, they have tens and hundred thousand tenants. A big part of the cost is really their compute infrastructure. And given the density of CSRX, imagine let's say if you had to deploy hundred servers to host 10,000 tenants before, now you can host those 10,000 tenants on 250 servers, for example. So you will get three to four X saving in the co compute that you would need to host those tenants. The last is micro-segmentation with OpenStack. Again, this is a demo that we are doing at our booth. The idea here is that by default, my, uh, OpenStack provides security groups, which is a basic firewall. A lot of customers uh, want to do advanced layer seven services. And what we have been able to do is, given the low footprint of CSRX, you can actually deploy CSRX in front of each workload in an OpenStack environment, and that traffic can be protected by CSRX and you can run any kind of layer four to layer seven services. And with that, I'll hand it over to John to put that in context of a real world example. Yeah, thanks. So when Expedient found out uh, about the CSRX last year, I think we started talking about it around the VMworld timeframe, we were pretty excited because we started to see some different ideas um, that we could possibly use this for in the future. And um, you know, if you're not familiar with Expedient, we're mainly an enterprise infrastructure hosting shop. So we have cloud services, co-location services, all those types of things. Customers come to us for a lot of different reasons. Usually they're looking for some sort of outcome. One of the biggest ones is risk mitigation. So compliance and security is really a big part of what they need. And here's an example of really what an environment looks like from us. Multiple tier one upstreams to the public internet. They're coming through a core, going through a firewall, usually have a load balancer scattered OS is behind it. And that firewall is the VSRX. We were an early adopter there. We worked a lot with Juniper in the alpha and beta. And that's great. It works, it works fantastic. It is uh, something that goes through a lot of different audits and compliance, no issues. We actually put our IDS product inside of it so we can actually pull information of what's going on. But one of the major issues here is it only grabs the north-south traffic only. And if you listen to uh, Randy Bias yesterday in his CUBE interview, he talked about this. This is like basically putting the moat around the castle. You're only getting a certain amount of security protection. And it's good, it passes audits, it works for compliance, but it's not really good enough for us. So one of the ways we looked at this is really, we have all this hardware that's actually living um, behind uh, that application for our customer. And the blue box, you have the cores, so we're running MX960 cores. In the orange box, you have spine switching. Um, so that's 40 gig QFX uh, switches there. And then we have all of our infrastructure, our pods as we call them behind it, that are providing our VMware or Hyper-V environment out to our customer. And our thought was, you know, it'd be pretty cool that that, that container's pretty lightweight, right? So what if we can start to put it places where we haven't had that deep packet inspection in the past and somewhere we can, we can audit and log this. So if we put it on the routers and we put it on the spines and we put it on the leafs and we put it inside of the, the, inside of the hypervisor host and even inside of the customer's operating systems that they're running, we can start to grab 
all of that information, all that data, and finally grab that east-west traffic. Because we all know we're not going to be building you know, the standard infrastructure like we've been building in the past. It's going to be dynamic. We're talking about horizontal scale. We're talking about scaling out to hundreds and thousands of servers. You're not going to be able to do the basic security protection you've done in the past when you start to shift this way. So we think you know, east-west traffic can provide us a lot of different benefits. Having the CSRX as that lightweight container means we can put it anywhere. It doesn't matter. It's a very, very small footprint, very, very low use. We love it. Limited overhead. If we start to identify east-west traffic and security, we can potentially mitigate any risk inside of a customer's environment as well as an inside of expedient environment that would then maybe, maybe create a noisy neighbor scenario for one of our other customers. As we strive to 100% SLA, and as we commit to 100% SLA, we need to make sure we can mitigate any possible risk for our customers at any time. Last but not least, and, and, and we talked about this for a second, but having the same automation tools was a really powerful thing for us. So we do VSRX. We have hundreds of clients running behind VSRX firewalls, as I showed you earlier. Being able to use the same tools that we're using for VSRX today for the CSRX is even more powerful because we're talking about not hundreds, but thousands and tens of thousands of containers in the future. So it's going to be a really powerful thing. So we're really excited. We're happy to be a part of the development with Juniper. Um, it's always interesting what, what, what they're working on in security, so we always enjoy it. And uh, I thank you for the time, and I'll let Shashir here uh, wrap it up. Thanks, John, and thanks, thanks very much for your partnership. Uh, so again, hopefully, uh, you got a quick overview of Container SRX. Uh, uh, if you want to learn more, stop by at the Juniper booth. We are actually doing a demo of CSRX on the OpenStack environment, uh, showing you the micro-segmentation use case. It's a very good demo. I encourage you to stop by, talk to us. Also, we are in a limited beta for CSRX. We have actually a GA level code for that. Uh, we would love to work with customers and partners on uh, uh, identifying the use cases and, and working with you on developing solutions with CSRX. So you can email uh, the contact information mentioned here. Also, there's a link to another recording uh, that you can go to and find out more details about Container SRX. With that, I want to thank you for your time, uh, for joining us for this session. Thank you, Alex. Thanks.